by popular demand, we're going to try to get this Mustang running. What we got here is a 70 Mustang Coupe. It's a V8 car. A little worse for wear, but not bad. And it's too solid to be ruined. So let's check it out and, whew, and see what we got to work with here. Let's see if we get it running and maybe we could scoot it around and drive it some. Well, all of it's blue for performance. But it's a little 302, I think. It's got late model valve covers on it. This one, when I got the car, this valve cover was off and I don't know why. Everything seemed to be there, but who knows. Fuel lines disconnected. It's a two barrel. I, I thought it was a four barrel. That's not a bad thing necessarily. Those things are pretty much bulletproof. You can tell it's got a new master cylinder on it. And on the inside, this car is remarkably solid. It's got a pretty good beer can hole over here in the passenger floor, but the rest of it is not bad. It's got a purple steering wheel and shifter for more performance. Dad took the seats out of it for his Torino. We got all kinds of crap back here. I mean, look at that. There's more brake parts. Clearly, that's what they were maybe trying to do oh. when they parked it. That actually has power steering. Yeah, it's yeah, a real, I just figured it just, it's a Grande. Yeah, this is a it's Grande. got man, manual brakes, but actually has power steering. Yeah, so this is the Grande. It's like the uh, luxury edition of a Mustang. It used to have a vinyl top on it right here. This is all Bondo. And it would either be a full or sometimes a half vinyl top. I don't remember what was in the trunk. Alright, right, um, well, just some trim, grill trim. I think it's got a newer gas tank in it. Love the Mustang gas tanks where the trunk floor is literally explosive. Where do we start? See if it's got oil in it? Uh, let's probably actually check the oil on it. This time. Got oil? There is oil and it doesn't look horrible. Okay. It's full. It is full. Uh, and we're out in the field today, you know, field repairing. So this is, you know, it's a revival <laughs> of my own car. Can it drive 300 feet home? No way! <laughs> Look at the neutral safety switch out here. Hmm. My neutral safety switch is just jumping this one right here. Yes. Pretty spot. spot. Supreme wiring. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure that's going to give us the best opportunity to get this to crank. <laughs> no keys, but the column's broken, so it'll spin. Look at that. God, there's some primo engineering going on here. If we drive this thing, we're going to die. I guess we'll see if there's anything left in this. Well, come here and click. Yeah, it's pulling in the regulator. Yeah, that's a good solid connection. Let's see what we got. Yeah, just... We might have to get a battery cable. Uh, all right. All right. I say we try to get the alternator back up or just take the belt off of it. Yeah, you're right. Or it'll remove itself. This just needs to be lifted back up to get into the head hole. Let's try to, we'll have to put a spacer behind it. Yeah, it must have Let's get a stack of lug nuts. Oh, somebody's Spaced already it. using uh -huh. that as use a spacer. Use a nut as a spacer. I think I've worked on it before. What is that back here? Is that EGR? That big tube the crossover the back tube? Of the head? It could be because I mean this might be a newer 302. That's what I'm wondering. It's got training fluid in it. Ooh, nice red training fluid too. Does this have points? I don't see the issue box. Yep. Alright. Let's see if they move. Oh, and spark. Yeah, they're working. Okay. The points work. They're newer. Probably means they're bad. And try to get that alternator on before we get decapitated. We found this spacer thingy to get behind that bolt. We're restoring this thing. That'll work. That looks like that's been beat on a little bit. Sparked and beat I actually on. think it's out of that. I don't know, you just gonna find the hole for me? No. Oh, 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 you got her to bite? Yep, I think so. I'll be damned. Glad we're doing this instead of getting it to like run or something. Is this where this goes? Is this a this is how you get vacuum? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I believe that's a cold start aid or something. <laughs> gonna try a key. No, nothing. We'll just jump it. It is lighting everything up though. Yeah. Does it have headlights or anything? No. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. It did. Yeah, once you wiggled it. Yep, they're there. All right. They're dim. Throw jump a jump box. box on it. Yeah. So I got this from JF Eggwo. Jump starter air wow. compressor thing. It looks that's super impressive. nice, actually. 
I don't know how it works, so let's try to figure it out without reading the directions, because that's what I do. Uh, 75% out of the box. Do not cause any short circuits. Do not touch two battery clamps together. Do not attach two nipples. They feel pretty good. The clamps feel nice good. Nice clamps. Yeah. Oh, it sparks got, right away. It's got juice in it already, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't think... It's just inflator. I think it's just on. We got lights no on. Yeah. There's no boost button? No, I think she's just live when you plug it in. That's kind of nice if that actually works yeah. right. I like that. <laughs> All right, no spark. Probably. Probably a decent place to start. I guess we could pull the old... Pull a wire. Pull a wire out. See if it's got spark. So we got coil or the points aren't adjusted, right? Because they look fairly new. Yeah. So they might have just tossed them in and not gapped them or done anything. Way out of whack. So that means I need, we need a matchbook cover or piece of paper or something. I got a, I might have a card in my wallet. Well, they were. It was, was sort of moving, but this whole valve cover is lifting up. I did see it. <laughs> there we go. Oh, she's just barely opening. Yeah. You know, whoever put this together was my kind of people. Everything is held together with zip ties. Oh, yeah. The I, grill. I the think I did this in another life. The radiator. <laughs> Use your dental insurance card to adjust these points. And loosen this one here, screw up. And then put her down in here and you can just turn it. I'm not so getting any sort of spark. You get spark to ground. Mm -hmm. We might actually have to file them. I wonder if they're corroded. Probably. Just run that screwdriver between them a little mm -hmm. bit. That was not doing that earlier. Uh -uh. Nice blue spark. Too. Yeah. And if we were smart, we'd turn the key off or something. <laughs> oh, I could see them opening and shutting now. Ah, so. oh, yeah. Is this thing dead? It might be. I think we cranked on it too much. But anyway, thanks to JF Eggwall for sending me that. I think we got really, really good connection. Is that it? No, it says 12. The starter cable looks just as good as the other one. It's like 90% electrical tape. Just happened to have one of these Chinesium coils laying around. Huh. Yeah. I um, I guess. Hmm. Okay. God dang, I'll make another run back to the shop. Yeah. I'm glad it's right there. What? Excuse me? Let's see if we got 12 or 9 volts going to the coil. Touch it at that dipstick too. There we go. Got nine. nine. So we so we have we have appropriate yeah. power. We have what we have at the battery at this point in time. Good. So it should We replace that wire. We'll go ahead and use the new coil anyway, I think. Yeah, I think so. And uh, let's see what happens then. Oh, that's really corroded and nasty. Do you realize what we did whenever we checked for spark? No. You pulled it off of here, and then I put it here. Oh. <laughs> well, We're, this needed to be done. See, that's all. <laughs> that's all dirty. That's shiny. Oh, so, yeah. You know, this was done for a reason. Durr. You know what? Fine, and I'll leave it in there because that's what happens sometimes. <laughs> There. Yeah, we took the battery out of the truck, threw it in here. That makes a big difference. Yeah, now let's check for spark. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. There there we fire. Go. It just tried to fire. All right. All right. It was just a weak battery the whole time. That thing, not nearly as good as JF Eggwall. No. I guess. Oh. <laughs> That's a... What's the deal with it? I don't know. That's kind of disappointing. It's always worked before. <laughs> yeah. All right. We hooked up the original coil again just to verify. I don't know. Here, just... See what It fired, so... Wow. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. So we didn't even need this, so... That's fine. I'll put that back in my... That was a... Kit. What not to do tutorial. Yeah. Don't be dumb. If, you, if you're watching this channel for any sort of information, you're in the wrong spot. <laughs> this gas tank sounds bone dry. So I'm just gonna dump some gas in here. And uh, we'll, we'll leave the line off the car, but just see if it'll pump on its own before we jump to boat tank. Look how solid the freaking rails are. It is, it is actually a pretty good car. Oh, whoa. 
<laughs> what? Is there no hose? <laughs> <laughs> that's right here. Yeah, you know, that's probably not going to work. We probably should have checked that first. <laughs> yeah, we're doing everything good today, man. We're rolling with the big boys on the revive and drive. Somebody put that over it to keep stuff out of the tank. I don't think they did a good job of keeping stuff out of the no. tank. No. All right. Um, there's a lot of grime down there. Maybe there's, we just run the boat tank. There's sediment in there, yeah. for sure. All right, well, let's do the boat tank. Cody's trying to get that fuel hose off from uh, the tank side. Didn't bring my knife. Use your teeth. I'm unprepared. Ooh, okay, hold on, let me get in here. <laughs> I don't get into the small places all that well. No, you fit better in a big truck. <clears throat> I can show your butt crack if you want. Oh, I'm sure it'll make an appearance. It's got an AMS oil filter on it. Yeah. Maybe she's built. I mean, she's got headers. It's a race car. <laughs> it does have slicks. Motor. It does have a freaking <laughs> drag slicks on it. Drag masters. Oh, another Mickey Thompson. <laughs> Yeah, that's not going to get out of here, even if we do get it running. What is the hold up here? Okay. I, I got things to do. Yeah. Take too long, we're going to have to build a fire to work by. Boom. Got her? Yeah, now you just got to figure out how to get it back on there. But it is off. Okay. Oh, I see. And this might be... Is it 3 8 or 5 16s? 5 16s, I think. Come on, what's taking so long? I, I, well, you know, it's... It's in a good spot. Yeah, man, this is great. This is almost as good as a small block Chevy. I got it snug. We'll see if it leaks. We got the fuel line off at the carb, so yeah. if it pumps, it's going to make a mess. Oh, I turned the key off. Oh, I heard a click. Yeah. Or it did nothing. Still haven't pulled up fuel, but hey, look at that! Oil it's pumping oil. Well, good. Getting some oil into the dry top end. Uh, clicky clack. We stole the battery out of the truck. I'm too lazy to pull it out. So. I'll be back with another truck. <laughs> and now he has to take the walk of shame back to the shop. You have arrived. What you got there? Primer ball ah. for boats. That's not the sucky side. What? Am I okay? Well, it's got an arrow on it. Yeah, arrow. Okay. Go with the arrow. Um, how is this gonna work? Go. Take it off of here. I would put it on this side. Push and just push it through the whole system. Sort of fits on there. It's doing something. It doesn't suck if you... We finally got fuel. It's working great. Yeah, Everything is... is going exactly as planned. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of mismatch, like, you know, an air hose fitting and a boat tank and a boat primer ball. This is some new government thing or something, probably, and it's working now, okay. though. Yeah. Yep. Fuel all over the engine. We're good. Okay, now let's start it. Yeah. We'll try to put this really dry-rotted, hard plastic line that's... Well, actually... Crank it. Let's see if it'll spit. Yeah. See if the fuel pump. I'm worried about that. Here. We'll just hit it real quick and see if the fuel pump's pumping. Oh, yep. Oh, there it goes. Yep, it'll work. Shall we put this in a permanent location? I mean, do you want to put all your eggs in one basket or? Yeah, I'm thinking, I, I'm thinking, well, either way, if we put this in the back, we can mount the clicky clack by it or something. You know? well, that's true. So I say let's do it. Let's put it in the trunk. Uh, I think we put it back here. We'll just run through here or the lock hole. Well, I can't do that, but we can run through here. Yeah. With our hose. Be semi-permanent or completely permanent because it's not going to get done in any other fashion. It might be permanent death whenever yeah. it, we'll just run this right over the roof. We improved a lot of things that we didn't need to do, so that's good. I also hear fuel squirting out of... Yeah, it's out of the fitting. I didn't get tight. Okay. You're wrangling that real well. Yeah. Now watch, it won't reach the truck. It'll be close. It won't. Go through the inside of the car. Might make it. I feel marginally comfortable with this. Yeah. yeah. Oh. 
got miles of room. Now, is this like the four barrel of that, where you can take it and run it with the top plate off? Yes. I believe so, because there's no, yeah, there's no pod on it, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah. That fits exactly like it's supposed to. Factory. See, you're upgrading the fuel flow when you put only 3 8 line on it and leave all the 5 16 fittings and everything. Yes. These are pro tips. Everybody knows them, really. I mean, if you're into hardcore racing like I am, I'm the winner of, uh, there was that one and then that other. I That's remember when you what? did that thing that one time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Everybody still talks about that one. Yeah, that one thing. Catch me on fire. Nada. Hang on, let's verify that this is working. No. <laughs> Not a drop. No. Let's just put the clicky clack on. Technically, this is how they want you to do it anyway. They, they always like to push. They don't like to pull fuel that much. I'm not gonna lie to you, the uh, the temperature's dropping out here a little bit. Yeah, I know. That's why I want to get this thing running and in my shop. Brought that for a reason, apparently. I need another clamp. It's possible once we get fuel pumping, and if it does run, that we won't need that electric one. It's possible. It might just prime it up and keep pumping once it's there. But Fill the crankcase right up with gas. Yeah, I have a feeling that that fuel pump up front's not, not doing what it's supposed to. We got gas up here. The key. Yeah. So, with the electric pump running off of the jump pack, we have gas. Yeah, you be the kill switch. Yeah, I say it might start spraying. It fall off the fuel pump, and we're just dumping it out on the ground. No. Let me crack it at the carb and see. Oh yeah, it's got pressure at the carb. Yeah, the accelerator pump's leaking. Yeah, now it's got some gas in there. Good to do. <laughs> right, right, right. Just had to beat on it a little bit. Slow this time. Yeah. It's not pumping a ton of oil. But it is pumping. Oh, there she goes. Now she's starting to run. Oh, wow. Now it's pumping. That's a good motor. That's a good motor. Yeah. Hell key. yeah. It turns off with the key. Let's throw the valve cover on. Yeah. The two bolts. <laughs> Just leave the jump pack in the back. I didn't even have it plugged up. That was running off the mechanical pump. Oh, it was. Okay, so it yeah. finally primed. Yep. Yeah, it needs an accelerator pump gasket for sure. But I mean, it'll still leak like crazy, but it'll help be better than it was. Yeah. And I can't wait to see how these slicks slide me immediately into the trees. <laughs> Put the uh, wire back on for the starter over that star solenoid. Oh, yeah. See if... And then we'll play with the ignition, the neutral safety switch. All right. There you go. We just need to figure out how to bypass this. I'm holding it right now. Oh, try that. No? no. A lot of gas. That's not bad. No. <laughs> Way quieter than I thought. I think it's got duels on it. Yeah. It sounds awful back here. Yes, it does. Sounds like turbo muffler. Yeah. Yeah, no, no clicky clack, huh? We'll leave that in there for emergencies. It's not even really smoking. This thing's not bad. Uh, That's gas. That's just gas. Tires have some air. Well, it's good to go. I don't have very much of this. Hopefully this is enough to make it move. So 
so low on transmission fluid, I don't think it knows what gear to go into. <laughs> but it worked. It moved. It's not bad. Yeah. I'll take that. On slicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was spinning really bad. <laughs> Both or one? Uh, I couldn't tell. We gotta go fetch our other truck. The multiple trucks we we'll use. That's yeah. a fine looking thing there. It looks good from about half a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good in here. Low and pretty mean looking little car. Pretty much just want to dig in here and see what on earth I got to work with in here. I like to look and see what all the brake parts are. And it does run fairly well, but the transmission was still slipping really bad pulling it in. I'll have to get a kit for that carburetor just to get the accelerator pump gasket. I'm not gonna be like fully restoring the car here today. Well, I'd just like to see if we can get it to drive around a little bit. See what we got in here. Brand new set of brake shoes. I think. Oh no. Brand new. Get the seats out of here. Get out of my way for a moment. See what manner of corpses are in here. That's a funny looking horn for something. Oh. Ew. Purple center cap, so. Here's the collar and cap for the steering wheel. Ooh, Pioneer CD player. 50 times four. Wow. Yeah, that's... Oh, there's the pony for the grill. Here, I think it's got a master cylinder on it already. Uh, there's a rod for it. We got the custom Crown Royal bag shifter boot here. The actual shifter boot. Is still under that stupid ghetto thing. Better already. See the wood grain? That's part of the Grande package. Garbage out of here. Here's the original steering wheel. Not sure what this Kenwood thing is, but it has a mic. Is it a CB? There's no way. It's just got to be a point-to-point uh, -point radio, right? I mean, it takes a telephone jack for its microphone. <laughs> Anybody there? <laughs> A new wheel cylinder, or was at one time. We got here, oh, lots of poop. They have the runs too. That is a front right there. Oh my god, look at the poop. It's the poop stain. Bust out the hand protectors. There's, uh, yeah, I don't think those are the right mirrors for this. Maybe they are. They feel awfully flimsy, but it is a Mustang, so maybe. Nope, oh, what do we got? Here? Got. Another new wheel cylinder. That is a rear, if I'm not mistaken. Ugh. Some of a hardware kit. Uh, <laughs> oh God. It's the other front brake hose. At least it hasn't been pooed on. Uh, hey. Headlight bezel. Old Walmart ATF. Window crank. I think that's probably about it. At least anything that I even want to bother with. And with that, I think I'll call it a night for tonight, and we'll get back with you tomorrow. I don't know, maybe dig into the brakes and see what's going on there. We're going to get this thing up in the air, pop the wheels off, throw them in the nearest dumpster we can find, see if we can't get some brakes out of this thing. I'm thinking getting these wheels off might be a trick. Look at those lug nuts. I don't know what I'm going to use for that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, those aren't really attached, per se. Uh, someone's been into that drum already. Let's rip all the wheels off, though, and assess the situation. I can just barely get, like, an eighth inch of the socket on there. Good thing they had these slicks on here. You, know? you gotta harness all 12 horsepower that two-barrel 302 makes. Say that drum hasn't been gone through. Then it makes me take the whole hub off. 
Look at this gigantic nut here. That's supposed to be a castle nut with a cotter key in it so it doesn't back off and kill you. They've elected to eliminate that. Apparently, you know, that's, that's a common modification. I don't really feel like there's anything in this drum. Is there a brake hose? Okay, brake hose is cut. I don't have a lot of time this week because I'm heading up to Wisconsin to do snowmobile stuff with junkyard digs. I've got about half the time as I usually do. Ah, nothing. But that's a new wheel cylinder in there. So they started to do something. They used lithium grease to pack that. That's, no, you can't do that, people. Why? That's the second one lately I've seen done that way. Uh, this tie rod is about to fall off. The slave cylinder is wasted for the power steering. That's pretty typical of these. The frame rail in this thing is freaking glorious. Good shape. I'm gonna start soaking this brake line here. We'll go ahead and knock all the other drums off. And we'll come back to it. And then we'll we'll all get together and sing Kumbaya and hope it, you know, un comes off of there. Hey, look, it has the right kind of nut on it. Not sure how much good this does without a castle nut, but, you know, it's the thought that counts sometimes. Oh, I've, there wasn't a washer on that other side either. Probably have one of these, because I converted my 67 to disc brakes a long time ago, and I still have most of that stuff. 67 through 70 are generally the same. There we go. Well, at least it's complete. Drum feels real nice. Ford uses these little keepers to hold the cotter pin. That was missing, but again, I found all my hubs from the 67 I did a few years ago, so we're good there. Hey, this is nice. I don't think the rears have been touched either. Just a little hung up on the shoes. Yeah, they've definitely, they've been done at one time, but not lately. Uh, we've got an open diff. I'm turning this and it's turning the other wheel backwards. No fancy stuff. It is an 8 inch. You can always tell by the bottom left bolt on a third member. If you can get a socket on it, it's an 8 inch. And let's see what's inside of this one. Contestant number 4. Yeah, same story as the other side. Doesn't look like it's been messed with. It's not always a bad thing. At least everything's here. Definitely going to be rounding off this brake line. It is stubborn. I'll try the vice grips, you know, try to, try to bust it loose. Hopes are pretty low. You dirty, rotten son of a gun. Oh, hey, I got it. Boy, that's some luck right there. I was able to go on it from the rubber hose side. There's one of those. And we've got our new one that was in the car right out of that box of poop. Not being able to rotate this gives us some problems here. I'm gonna have to take the wheel cylinder off thread this onto the brake line, and then spin the wheel cylinder onto this. Then we'll put this brake together. We'll go do a bunch more brakes. This time on Pole Barn Garage, we do brakes again and again and again. That's the content you're here to see, I know. I do all this work just for that line to immediately blow out. All right, now I gotta pop this wheel cylinder out of here. It's missing the copper washer, of course, and I didn't see one in the box of poop. I have some, and it's pretty close to the right one, I think, so I don't know. Pretty close is usually not good enough for brakes, but, well, it is going to be today. If it's not that hard to try to half-ass it, then it's worth half-assing. If it's going to really bite you later, then you might want to look into doing it correctly. Now you can see I just stuck the hose through the backing plate. I'm able to just hold the wheel cylinder, tighten it down, and it's going to put that hose in a bit of a goofy bend up here, but it's really not too bad, so... I think we just got away with that. I was able to salvage master cylinder nipple hooker upper thingies out of my old brakes from my Mustang, so that saves us a little bit of money. And we got our shoes here, and I don't, I don't think these are for this, are they? I mean, I don't know. The old brake from my Mustang. These don't even resemble that. They're not a rear shoe because the rear drums are much narrower than the fronts. So, uh, good thing I have this. I'll just take the shoes out of it. Disassembling a shoe on the ground is always a lot harder than doing it on the car. Ow! Shop band aid. Good thing we got all this uh, adjuster mechanism thing here, too. Because if we don't have that, that's never included in a hardware kit. I don't know why, but it is not. Let's just salvage all of this 
it all looks pretty good, so we'll probably just reuse it all. I don't mean to upset my GM guys, but genuinely think that Ford has a superior drum brake than GM. Their disc brake is far inferior, way over complicated garbage. Or at least the Kelsey Hayes disc is. Ford typical drum brake. They use the same basic brake from like 1950 up to like 1990. Ford did some good stuff, especially with the Mustang. You know, I mean, this thing is basically a Ford Falcon. Uh, it, that was designed in, what, 60 as a uh, economy car, a cheap economy car. Well, and then Lee Iacocca, he said, let's sell a, a cheap sports car to kids, basically. Design this car to be simple and cheap, cheap to maintain, and pretty damn reliable. Now, they rust terribly. You could buy the car for you know, the same price as an average economy car when they release. Adjuster mechanism thingy in here. Oh, you know what we don't have is a brake adjuster, though. Go ahead and slap the top end of this thing back together, and then we'll go hunt for a brake adjuster. I was able to find one, and I think it's even for a Ford. There we go. That stands a... A uh, minimal chance of actually functioning. I don't have a seal puller, so we'll use this little pry bar here. Look like they're filled with the same stuff all over the back seat, actually. I'm just gonna wipe them off, and we'll just pack them real quick. I'll knock this one out here, and then I'll probably go ahead and knock out the other front brake. And then we'll move on to the rears, which are strictly optional. Pack this sucker full, and you just want to scrape it through your palm until you can see the brown the brown goo is still in there, but as you scrape in your fresh, it'll push the brown goo out. And then you'll inevitably just mix it into your hand anyway, but, you know, it'll probably end up with 75% new grease. Now, there's other channels that claim to be budget, but do you see them putting used brake parts and random things they found laying around in their vehicles? I don't think so. That's called budget right there, buddy. Seal back in. Looks like it's in good shape, so nothing to worry about there. Let's clean up this brake drum real well. Yep. Okay, it's turned. And, yeah, so go ahead and slap this on here. Make sure the brakes aren't dragging too much. They can stand to come out a little bit more, so I'm going to adjust them out a little bit. Try to get them close so that adjuster doesn't have to work as hard as it might otherwise have to. That's it, right? Take our washer. She's keyed to go in one way. Is there something wrong with the spindle of this thing? Is that why it had the big nut on there? There must be some sort of difference in the spindle from 67 to 70. Is it the same thread? It's a different thread and everything. Hmm. Interesting. I never knew that. Anyway, you don't want to be running without that washer. you got to spread the load out on that uh, bearing. So I'm just going to use the washer that came off the passenger side to go off of. And I'll take a Dremel and open up the one I found. I can tell holding them up that other washer is maybe an eighth of an inch bigger. It's not much. Probably not even that. Sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to put it in my vise here that I can conveniently access because I'm not a complete slob. I'm going to take a carbide bit and just try to chew away the inside of that washer. There we go. Now it's got a washer on there to retain that bearing, spread the weight out over it. I guess I'll just reuse this big nut because the uh, threads are different. My 67 was a early 67. And I know that that one used the 64 to uh, 6 brakes on it. This seemed to be working before, so we'll put it on here and make a mental note to find a castle nut that's the same size as those. This is sketchy to say the least, but let us drive the car around here at least. And before we even consider taking it on any road trips, we'll fix this. Put a little dab of grease in the cap and hopefully it'll fit around that washer I just made. If not, we will make it fit around the washer I just made. Anything's a hammer if you try hard enough. You got this side off pretty easily. The brake line actually came right off and it's pouring fluid out of it right now, so that's encouraging. Knock this out and we'll move to the rears. Oh, wow. God, that looks so much <laughs> Ta-da! <bigger. laughs> Look at that taillight, though. It needs to get the black off the taillight. Yeah. 
Let's take that bezel off and probably mm. clean it right up though. Yeah. Probably not very well attached anyway. Uh, it doesn't appear to be. What, holding the bezel on? The whole tail light. <laughs> yeah, it's been cleaning up all the chrome that somebody murdered out because that's the cool thing to do, you know. Let's take all the style away from a car and just spray paint over it. Yeah, that brake's done. I've only got one wheel cylinder for the rears. This isn't for this. I don't know what that's for. You can tell that both of these are for the same side. They're right rear for something. This looks like the correct one. Figured I'd try to take a peek at this and immediately snapped off the bleeder. It actually has some pedal. Not a lot, but it's way better than it was. And I haven't even seen anything pouring out of it like Old Faithful. And I've had to bleed the fronts, of course, because we had those open. And we quit drawing down fluid, so you got one of two things going on. Either, uh, either the wheel cylinders are completely plugged up, or that rubber hose is collapsed and not allowing fluid to come into it, or they're perfectly fine and just need blood. But uh, I'm probably going to go with the hose is collapsed. That's okay for our purposes at the moment. It's bolted in so good, you know. Like when I tap on it, it's going to break. It's zip tied in. I probably have some sheets. Uh, There's clips and clips. I think I have some. Well, it's all I got. I think this zip tie right here is holding it. Oh. But this one and this one. Yeah, the radiator is zip tied into it too, actually. <laughs> yep, it sure is. Look at there. Good, now I can for that and pound that down. Yeah, and then put that lower trim piece in. Is that a bezel? Is that a headlight bezel for this? This is for the driver's side, or passenger side, yeah. Oh, around the, you gotta pull the headlight out, put that yeah. in, and then... Well, actually, you don't even have to pull the headlight out. You just stick this on there. If that headlight wasn't in there crooked, I see. There. Yeah, that's why the front of this thing looks so good. It screws in from the bottom more likely. They used to screw in from the bottom more likely. No, see, it's got holes drilled right here. So Set it right on top. It's right on top. I'm going to bet you a quarter. Nobody ever sees that. That's why it goes on these ends. Those end ones definitely need to. Yeah, that's what I need to put that clip in there and just use regular screws to screw in the, the, the lance. That more thing. And then this. <laughs> the self tappers for that. Every one of them. Sideways is better than no way. I just cracked this bleeder on the front and we've already got fluid dripping out of it. I'm probably just let it gravity bleed for a while. I think you can find bolts that fit that valve cover. It needs what? Four more? Yeah. Three, three more. Yeah. Is it just this one? Just that one. Okay. Yeah. It has two in it already, but okay. just find a few more to throw in. Try to bolt this front bumper up. This is why the thing is flopping around in there. Straighten that bracket right here. There we go. Body work. And that'll support the corner of it. Force this thing to operate. It's got a slot cut in it right here to help pry it up into place. It's kind of cool. I bet that's something that I used on the line. I guess it is really smart. It is. Okay. I think it got. I'll continue forcing it. All right. <laughs> that's a little better. At least it doesn't flop quite as much. Yeah. Well, maybe that's the one focus. Oh, is that the one with the cramp in it? Yeah. Just stab it. Just twist tab. You know, when you stab somebody, you twist it around in them so they can't fix it. I mean, uh. Well, maybe a bolt broke off in it. I don't know. I think you're right. Yeah, a bolt's broke off. In it. Okay, well, ignore that. Go down. There. Hey, there's the fluid. Solid rust coming out. <laughs> no, go ahead, let off. No air. Let off. And pump. It's disgusting. There's no air in it. Let's go down. There's some fluid. Up. Down. Hit him. Yeah. Oh. No, just hold them. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they work. I mean, I'm pretty much the same thing as a car. Right? So, but, hit him again. And we got a whole lot of nothing going on back here. And 
Uh, it would be my bet that that rubber hose is collapsed. Nah, nothing. I just went to the parts store, forgot to buy antifreeze, so hopefully it's not too low. I don't have much. Doesn't sound very low. Oh no, it's fine. Look. It's full. Totally good. Good to go. <laughs> uh, we also picked up a carb kit, so we can... I'm not going to use the whole thing, but I will change out that accelerator pump that's leaking. And we got a, the cheapest, crappiest oil change available for it. And I got some new brake drums. That looks good. Mm -hmm. They are brand new, so, you know, they look a little different, you know. Yeah. Now it's brand new. Yeah, there. Totally brand new. See, we, we bought that. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. And it's new. It looks much better. Yeah, I'm turning the drums. Get it? Get it? Turning the drums? Get it? No. You get it? I'm, I'm having the drums turned. Get it? It's beautiful. Well, I think we're going to throw these gray spokes on there. Uh, off of JD's car. Just for now. This one's got a bad tire on it, so I actually have had two new tires for them. For quite a while. I don't know if JD pulled the center cap just off of this one. And then clean them up a little bit before we throw them on the car. Pop this accelerator pump out of here and dump gasoline all over the engine. You know, it takes a, a flathead screwdriver and that's it. I might actually have to remove the distributor cap. Oh man, getting out of, can out of hand here. Oh no, what am I gonna do now? That's not to say we're not gonna need to really dig into this carb and see what's going on inside of it later, but for the time being it's pretty obvious that right here's our problem. It's just this gas gets all dried out, let it leak. No big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the top plate off of this. Because there's a little gasket that goes behind the accelerator pump here. Check valve, I think. I uh, pulled on it and broke it, of course. Good thing is I can pull this top plate off and I can get to everything in that carburetor. We'll go ahead and replace the top plate gasket while we're in there. So down in here, right below the float, there's a little orange thingy. Should be sticking out. Really, I don't want to pull the float out of it. I have to. There we go. Just that little guy. I didn't want him rolling around in there. The carb's nice and clean inside. So we'll take our new little orange one-way check valve thing here. And you just stick this guy through the little hole in the front there and grab onto its tail. What I was hoping to do was pull it out the front. You could do that sometimes. Give it a little tug and it'll seat into place. You know, that's the idea. That's now installed and then basically you just put this little spring on the back side of your accelerator pump. Set him there and you, know, you just kind of line it up with the little cap here. There's a lever inside of here and it pushes on this diaphragm and that makes it, you know, do accelerator pump thing. Every carb kit comes with multiple gaskets. Uh, like this one came with two top plate gaskets. So whenever you uh, check it out, make sure you grab the one that looks like what came off of it, right? But this one has it, so let's toss it on. Okay, putting the final touches on her right now. You know, after turning all those screws and one wrench, I'm just exhausted from working on this carburetor. I guess let's start it up and see if it leaks or how bad it leaks. Oh, I had to turn four flathead screws. Oh no. <gasps> Oh, carbs fixed. That accelerator pump sounds good. It's quick. Bam, bam. Yeah. Good response. So, where are you coming along on those wheels? Uh, pretty. That steel wool works really good. Okay, good. 
Oh. Huh. The alpha was leaking. It is. Yeah. Well, I should have figured. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's an ancient gasket we tried to reuse. There's a lot of things wrong with this. <laughs> Little tiny things. Though. I mean, nothing big. It's cleaning up really good. Yeah. Is that the flat one? <laughs> no, this is the flat one. Yeah, that's... Okay. Uh, I don't know if yeah. it's a bad one or not. No, it is. It's flat. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna go take that over to the tire machine and see if I can't mount it. Okay. All right, got that one mounted up with a brand new tire. Uh, you know, it only took me an hour. Uh, JD got these cleaned up real good. We're about out of time for tonight, but let's at least put one on so we can get a taste of what it's gonna be. That is quite a bit better. These are off of JD's 59 Ford, and originally off of my Mustang. They've been around a minute, and now they're going back on a Mustang. All right, there we go. Uh, four out of five ain't bad, just like Meatloaf said. The fronts are Unilug. They're different. They're garbage. Completely. These wheels are trash, which is why they're not on JD's car. They'll uh, work to roll this thing around. It's better than those things. I will seriously go find a dumpster to throw those wheels in. It's like Bullet, but more like, you know, 22. Old uh, 22 long rifle here is looking pretty good. So, tomorrow we'll put her on the ground after we change the oil in it and... That's pretty much it for this, uh, to this point. Now, well, of course, have to, maybe we get these seats to actually mount in here, but I think we could take her for a spin. Yeah, we're back out here tonight. I'm going to change the oil on this thing. While I'm doing that, GD's going to vacuum up all the poo out of here. Try to make this a little more sanitary. Uh, so vacuum the top of the back seat off, and then move it and vacuum under it. You know, watch, watch the big chunks, any super big chunks, they can just be deposited in the hole. Yeah. Good luck, sir. All right. Godspeed. That uh, back half of that carpet's totally salvageable. The front half, not so much, but we could scab that in with something. Oil's changed. Now JD cleaned the tires next, probably. Uh, if not the interior. I don't know. What do you want to do? Uh, tires. Tires. Then I've got to hog out a hole to get a seat to fit in here. Uh. There we go. Yeah. Get them all slicked up. Yeah, then we go on the road and then they're ruined. Immediately dirty. It has a stain on it. Might take some scrubbing. Yep. These seats are out of Dad's Torino. And they are absolutely not for this car or his Torino. And if I could just get at least two of these to bolt in there, then I'd be pleased. Okay, it looks like we gotta drill over quite a ways over there. And I grab the dullest drill bit I own. Gotta hog it out a little bit. No way. I mean, you can, I guess. Just not comfortably. Might have to stick the vacuum up in the headliner. Is it pretty bad, too? Uh, yeah. Oh. This headliner poses a problem. I can see about that much. Well, anyway, I think I'll bolt the seat in and then we'll deal with the headliner situation. So you can see, my view is slightly obstructed. Just a little, though. What I'm gonna do is take a screwdriver, right? I'm gonna poke a little hole right there. And then I'm gonna poke a little hole right here. And this is because I can't sew. No, I don't want to learn how to sew. No, I don't care. Just save your fingers a little trouble, okay? See, fish this through here. Look at that. See that? Oh my god. It's Boom. insane. Anyway, we're going to repeat that probably, uh, well, at least ten more times, and that's going to completely repair this headliner. Absolutely, 100% repair yep, this sure. part of the headliner. I mean, other than the other part of the headliner. <laughs> yeah, what are we going to do about that? Uh, leave more it. zip ties. We could probably zip tie this to something. Reupholstered. Look at that headliner. It's like brand new. You'd never even be able to tell. Anyway, JD and I are going to clean up the door panels in this thing, and I'm going to go ahead and put a new floorboard in that side. Is that stuff working? Yeah. 
convertible top clean. It's probably slightly more sanitary than it was. Here, watch out. I gotta put a new floorboard in. Oh, yeah. Got that. Yeah. There we go. What? For what hole? <laughs> Rock solid. I gotta do a little carpet trimming here. It's gonna cut off the spot where it's folded over. I'm just gonna use this murder weapon to trim this out. Let me put my new carpet kit in. No, the floor is really good on this. There. Haha. -ha. <laughs> and it's fine. Done. Wow. Rear carpet. Wow. Look at that. Well, JD got that door panel cleaned up good. You got the other one too, didn't you? Yep. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, just spray that seat down so I don't wipe it off real quick. I mean, it don't got to be perfect. Just cleaner, you know? There was poop literally all over it, so... Yeah, I mean, you know. who knows? Who Proceed knows? with caution. Maybe don't pick your nose after. Just clean it up a little bit. Yep. Good. Well, that's poop stain. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's just poop. Uh-huh. Don't worry about it. It's a big, there are some big turds in here. They look like gigantic peanuts. Homeless guy-sized turds. <laughs> Nice. It's definitely got the right attitude, I think. Sitting down like this, gonna get her fired up and uh, fill up the transmission with some fresh ATF and see uh, where that was at because it was slipping mighty bad earlier. So, uh, what, two days ago? Definitely got a hell of a misfire. We're gonna have to check the timing and stuff on it. But again, that's for next episode. It needs uh, quite a bit. The uh, pressurized cooling system bombs me. Pretty good indicator of a head gasket. ATF is about as good as anything to run down the throat of a car and knock some carbon off the rings and valves. It works pretty good. Will it restart? Come on. I think that carb needs a little bit of work. Yeah. Just a guess. But uh, uh, I'm happy with it. Looks good. Runs okay. I guess we'll try to drive it tomorrow and we'll see what happens. I thought it might have been something pressurizing the cooling system, but the gasket on the bottom of this cap is rotted away. So, i would probably throw a new one on here. It had a 13 pound cap. This says 1.1 bar. I don't know what that is in American, but why are you even bothering putting that on? I don't know what that means. Who knows what that means? What is 1.1 bar? 1.1 bar, 16. So let's, might as well put the new one on there. There we go. Look at that. And it doesn't leak anymore. Brand new aftermarket. I don't know, I guess we could see if it doesn't. I think that was it. That was it. That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> We got floors, everything. Oh yeah, immediately floor. Let's see if the transmission works. Oh. Before we get to the road. <laughs> I hope there's enough gas in that boat tank. There's cops are the road. Oh. Let's go left.
<laughs> what the heck? That felt bad. I don't think it has third gear. That's got to be second, right? Unless this thing's yeah. got a crazy gear in it or something. There's no way. That's why she was parked. Oh, God. The brakes are iffy at best. Definitely only fronts, of course. Oh. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> sketchy she needs some help and a transmission yeah most definitely if you have a c4 ford small block transmission let me know i like it though yeah it, i like it too. it's pretty fun it makes me miss my mustang it drove a lot like this you know terrible yeah <laughs> and really sketchy it's really coming around actually like the engine yeah it's running a lot better oh the front brakes don't do a very good job of holding this really no it's also pouring smoke out of it. It's weird. Yeah. It's like maybe we shouldn't do this immediately, but whatever. Well, we made it back. That's a plus. Yeah. She's feisty. Not really. Where do I park this thing? I don't know. We're it's out like, of room. We don't have any cars. <laughs> yeah, we don't have any cars at all. Here, we'll put it back here by the bank. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Well, that valve cover leaks real bad. I never put a wing nut on that, so that's some of the clunking. Uh, everything else looks okay. How hot are you? Not that hot. It didn't boil over. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Thermostat opened up. I think she's all right. Got milkshake. 
Nah, no milkshake. She's good. This thing's ready to go. Basically, is, daily driver. Why is there water, or whatever that is, like oil or something? It's oil from the valve cover. Oh. Remember the valve cover oh, yeah. that was off of it? Sprayed all the I mean, way that back ain't there. Nothing. We just throw some valve cover gaskets on it. Some rear, we throw a valve cover gasket on it, some rear brakes, all that crap. And I think we'll have us a car here, actually, and a transmission. That's a big one. That seems to be a common theme on this channel lately, right? If you want to see more of the little 22 long rifle Mustang, uh, you know, let me know down in the comments. And uh, remember to hit that like, subscribe, and all that stuff. And uh, I'll see you next time on Pole Bar Garage.